So, Colin, it's very rare for me to see a film in a room full of fans and critics as well, and the sense of excitement was audible in there. Can you kind of describe what excitement you felt when you got this job? Yeah, you had fans in your screening? Well, they were critics, but they were also fans, which awesome. is such a rarity. That is a rarity. Like, where did the fans come from? That's great. Uh, yeah, you know, I uh, the excitement, it's weird, like, you never really get that moment uh, in my particular line of work where you get to like jump up and down in the street and be like, I did it. There's always, you know, there's a period of time where you think something might happen and then it finally does. And at that point you're just relieved that, that you know, you're not gonna be embarrassed for already telling your mom. Uh, and so at that point I was just like, oh, thank God. Uh, but you know, the, uh, the excitement has, has, has hit at different points and, and I think it, most of it is really uh, based on relief uh, that I that I am not a crazy person because you you kind of you make a choice to devote your life to something that is a, a creative art uh, and I probably could have been successful at, at other things uh, but I gambled on this and to have reached a point where I actually get to do it for a living you know and in addition to that getting to do this uh, I, I am. I'm greatly relieved that this uh, <laughs> that I gambled and, and and had at least one win. I mean, you mentioned it as a as a gamble. How big of a gamble was it from your last project, which was obviously a much smaller project? Um, well, it was really a gamble for somebody else. Uh, it was so you know I think that the gamble that was taken on me, uh, both you know by Stephen and by the studio, there there was great faith behind it, uh, and there was no evidence uh, that I was going to be able to deliver something that uh, was going to work on all the levels that it had to work on, and it's, it's, it couldn't just be a fan film. And so the fact that I happen to be a fan of Steven Spielberg is adorable, but it's not gonna actually result in something that works. Uh, and so, you know, over time, I feel like everybody started to see that I was, intensely committed to, to making something that uh, could stand both the test of time on its own and on, and stand alongside Jurassic Park, which is a tall order. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you've got Chris Pratt in this film, and it was before he was being linked with every film going, as he is mm -hmm. at the moment. What was it that he brought to the project? Uh, you know, he, he is, uh, he's, feels like a real person that you know and that you could have a beer with or, or like 10 beers with. Uh, and I feel like, uh, and you know, He's appealing to all kinds of people. Uh, you know, in America, we have uh, a, a very diverse population of people, and many of whom see the world very differently from the others. And, and I think, specifically in America, Chris Pratt uh, can appeal to uh, you know we call the red states and blue states. I think that everybody from all of those places uh, can agree that he's somebody that they can connect to, and that is extremely rare. I thought it was very interesting to see um, two young brothers as the as the central point uh, for the starting uh, point of the film. And um, what was behind that decision? Uh, you know, I uh, I mean a couple things. One is I was determined to uh, make sure that that a complaint of this movie was not. Uh, I love the movie, except the kids were annoying, uh, and I don't find them annoying at all. And and I also wanted to find a very uh, very clean, simple, emotional foundation for what they could go through, and uh, whether it's it's sisters or brother and sister or two brothers, the idea of having a sibling where one is is older than the other by enough of a margin that they've moved on to a different stage in life and is leaving the younger one behind, uh, compounded by the fact that their parents are going through a divorce. I felt like these were emotions that we would be able to to work through in a way that that hopefully wouldn't become maudlin uh, or sappy and and all the things that we fear. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of those two performances. And, and I, I think especially, um, I mean, Ty Simpkins is incredible, but Nick Robinson for being brave enough to to play a character that's unlikable at first uh, and, and to become likable over the course uh, in the same way that I think Bryce Dallas Howard uh, does. I mean, these are, these are really brave actors. Sure. Now, finally, um, and it sounds quite vulgar to mention this, but the, there's a high kill count in this film. Now, mm -hmm. were you aware of that? Did you keep a tally on it? And was that part of upping the ante from the previous films? Uh, we became aware of it. Uh, they, there are, I think the kill count is higher than all the other movies combined, and which is, you know, which makes sense in that the other movies are always small groups of people uh, going to an island, and there are many more here. We actually don't have an official kill count because there could be many deaths unaccounted for. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that the the reality of of a theme park of this size uh, would would result in in a great deal of carnage, uh, and you don't have to see it on screen to feel it. And so I, I don't necessarily necessarily think it's more violent. I just think conceptually you're aware. You know, some some pretty rough stuff went down.
Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Colin. Thank you, man. Pleasure, man. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!